in this image we can see that there is some redness of the tongue over here in addition to that in addition to that we do not see any papillation on the tongue it appears very smooth and it appears like it does not have any uh, rough surface how does the tongue usually look the tongue is usually showing papillae and it is a rough velvety surface over here you do not see any of that so based on this we can say that the tongue appears to be bald okay so the since the tongue appears to be bald what is this called as bald tongue so bald tongue is seen in megaloblastic as well as pernicious anemia so reading the question over here a peripheral blood smear of a patient reveals megaloblastic anemia he was advised to go through clinical examination for the same serum serum antibodies against intrinsic factors were noted on the next dental visit the lesions on the tongue showed a resolution as shown in the figure which of the following is the most probable medication prescribed to the patient so what we need to remember is uh, both megaloblastic as well as pernicious anemia present as macrocytic anemia okay and normochromic that means in this condition the hemoglobin level is normal but the cells of the rbc are larger okay so for megaloblastic anemia the deficiency of vitamin b12 that is cyanocobalamin causes this condition this is what is called as the extrinsic factor as opposed to the intrinsic factor which is produced by the oxygenic cells of the gastric mucosa this this intrinsic factor combines with the extrinsic factor which leads to the absorption of vitamin b12 in the git so if there is a gastrectomy patient or if there is a patient who has not vegetarians for example who haven't consumed uh, cyanocobalamin because it is not easily produced or easily available from other plant sources patients can suffer from pernicious anemia sorry megaloblastic anemia pernicious anemia on the other hand is caused due to deficiency of vitamin b9 that is folic acid over here also the blood picture appears to be normal the main way how you have to differentiate between uh pernicious from megaloblastic anemia is you carry out lab tests in these lab tests what you do is you find out whether the patient is basically suffering from vitamin b9 or vitamin b12 deficiency so in order to after you achieve a diagnosis based on that you modify your treatment plan so in this condition the patient would be since it's already mentioned that the patient is suffering from megaloblastic anemia you have to understand that the patient is going to be having vitamin b12 loss and administration of vitamin b12 will reverse the condition if you administer b9 the patient is not going to have any reversal of condition because the patient is still the primary deficiency is not corrected and that is why you give vitamin b12 the usual dose is about 1000 micrograms per day for 4 weeks once that is done the reserves are checked and then you decide whether you have to give more or not once you administer vitamin b12 there is a sharp increase in the reticulocyte count and once that reticulocyte count increases you uh, keep assessing the patient to see what is happening so this condition that you see over here this is called as bald tongue of sandwich whereas in vitamin b9 that is pernicious anemia you see a large beefy tongue okay which is called as hunter's glossitis so the test that i remember i was talking to you about the tests that we the test that we carry out for vitamin b12 is uh, different from what we call for vitamin b9 so we need to remember as students we need to remember the uh, names of the tests for either of them and once that is done you can uh, go ahead with the treatment plan